My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Ever heard of the term genetic screening for sex selection or even surgical sperm retrieval? Well, we will be getting educated on all of that today on the show and you'll be shocked to know that it is actually possible in Nigeria. The show is My Fertility Path and I am Nsi Petum. Welcome to the show. Today, we will be looking at modern trends in assisted reproductive technology or ART as popularly called. We'll be right back. Our guest today is Dr. Victor Jai, Assistant Director and Consultant Gynecologist. We are also joined by our resident doctor, Dr. Bayami Ajayi, CEO of Nordica Fertility Center. Welcome, Dr. Ajayi. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I'm sure you're not brothers. No, uh, I'm sure we don't look alike. So for clarification, I shall have Dr. Ajayi as Dr. One, <laughs> Dr. Ajayi Two. So I'll start with you. This question is for you. Can you give us a background of assisted reproductive technology from inception up until this time? Yes, um, assisted reproductive technology, um, the starting point really was in 1978 when we heard of the uh, birth of the first IVF baby, Louise Brown. She was born in July 1978. After that has been development of IVF or assisted reproduction. Many techniques have now come into play and uh, we're going to talk about those modern uh, techniques. Can you throw some light on the modern trends? Then? Yes. Uh, for instance, um, there's what we call genetic screening, pre-implantation genetic screening. Now we can screen for gender. We can also even um, prevent uh, couples who are AS, AS genotype, from having babies that are SS. We can even, uh, in those days, once a man has no sperms, there's what we call esospermia, um, he's almost unable to have a child. But now we have techniques where we can go to the testes and collect sperms from there, and such a man can have children. And then we can also do this, what we call fertility preservation now, where a woman who is not ready to have kids for whatever reasons, can store her eggs mm. and use them later. Okay, so there, there are a lot of these techniques that have come up over the years. So can I ask, who needs genetic screening? Okay, um, well, Genetic screening, who needs it is anybody who is at risk of uh, transmitting genetic disorders to the offsprings. Okay, so that's, those are the people. So either you, there is a family history of genetic disorders, either you had a baby, previous baby with congenital anomalies, and then that's, uh, then you probably would need, or if you are uh, older in age, for example, if a woman that is above 37 years that wants to use her eggs, she will probably need because the chances that she can, the offspring, the offspring of such a union can have congenital abnormality, uh, abnormalities is higher than the general population. So such people will need uh, screening for you. Okay, so what is surgical sperm retrieval? Fantastic. Now, so in 78, just like Victor said, yes. we started with the IVF baby. That mm -hmm. was because the tubes were blocked. So the first application of IVF or when there was a female factor, tubes were blocked. Okay. At, at that point in time, we could re do almost nothing when the sperm count was bad. All right, so from about 1980, we started ICSI, or intracytoplasmic yes, sperm injection. Injection, yes. That came into being where we could treat men who have very low sperm count, all right? After that, we, you know, necessity is always the mother of invention. As we conquered one ground, we went higher. And then we would step to people who had no sperm at all. Mm. And then we could go into the testes and bring out sperm and then... So male factor infertility tended to be a little bit controlled, but we still, there were still other steps. 1984, mm -hmm. we saw that it was possible for us to use eggs from younger women for older women. So the idea of donor eggs came up. And then 
from there also, the genetic thing, you know, we, the, the uh, genetic sequencing was done in 2003 when the whole world celebrated in April 2003 that we were able to have the genetic sequence of human beings. Yeah. And since then that has been applied to even assisted reproduction and that's why we, we can do genetic screening for embryos now. So yeah, it's, it's been one step after the other and to be where we are now. So can you, can you, can you define it in layman's terms, what genetic sequencing is? Okay, um, we know that we're made up of uh, DNAs. Yes. All right, because every cell has a nucleus. Yes. In the nucleus, there are DNAs. Yes. All right, these DNAs are arranged in chromosomes, in the chromosomes. The building block of the chromosomes are the genes. All right? Yes. So, uh, and the, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, each from each parent. So when the two come together, you have a pair. So 23, so it's just like you have like um, a, a bookshelf. Yes. And there's 23 layers. Now, at each layer, something can go wrong. And so that's what we're looking for. It depends on what you're looking for in genetic screening. You could be looking for chromosomal disorders in which you're looking at the 23 uh, layers yes. in the bookshelf. You're looking at the books that are arranged. Just looking at them. Is one as one falling down? Is one completely missing? Do you have two, uh, three instead of two? Mm -hmm. You know, that's looking at the chromosomes. Now, the genes are the ones that inside the chromosome. So it's like now you open the book and you see typographical errors. That's where genetic problems are. Oh. So that's in a layman's language, that's what we look at for when you're talking about either chromosomal disorders or you're looking about genetic, genetic disorders. disorders. And then can I just say something? Because I know that people normally talk about um, there's this question of having male children and I know that the man carries the Y chromosome. That's right. And the woman carries the X. Mm -hmm. So it is only a man that can make you have a male child. Yeah. So it is not the case of the woman. Mm -mm. So it doesn't mean that if as a guy, I can go look for another woman who's going to be a male child. It's not going to happen if I don't have a Y chromosome. Okay, let's go back to this bookshelf. Thank you. Now, the 23 layers, just like I said, the last layer, yes. the 23rd, it's either X, X, or X, Y. So, each, of the, uh, uh, each in the union contributes either X or Y. Of course, the man is the only one who can contribute Y. y. So, if the man contributes X to the offspring it's, a, it's girl. a girl if the man contributes y to the offspring it's a boy so it's the man who determines the sex of the baby so doctor can you tell us what dna fragmentation index is okay um every cell in the body has dna sperms also have dna sperms are cells yes the, the, the smallest building block of the body are called cells so sperms have dna this dna can be damaged and if it's damaged, then it will affect the function of the sperms. Uh, sperm is supposed to fertilize the egg, lead to what we call the embryo, which okay. potentially becomes the baby. So if the sperms have bad DNA or a lot of DNA damage, then it can affect their function. And this can affect the chance of getting their partners pregnant. So um, the DNA fragmentation index is a result of a test done on the sperms. So um, it's that you, you may ask that what causes this damage to DNA mm -hmm. in men. Lifestyle is one of them. So men who take a lot of alcohol, mm -hmm. men who smoke cigarettes, mm -hmm. men who smoke marijuana, mm -hmm. who use cocaine and all those so drugs. Drug use generally. Drug use. Is codeine part of it? Because I need uh, to, because that's a trend in Nigeria and I, we need to talk about Codeine, it. yeah. Those um, kind of drugs can affect potentially okay. sperms. The other thing is occupation. Men who are exposed to petrochemicals, so people working in the oil industry, potentially can have um, that damage. People who have medical conditions like hypertension, diabetes, mm -hmm. can have this. Obesity is one of them and can cause uh, DNA to, <laughs> to, to get damaged of sperms. Okay. Um, other things like, um, you know, people who old, old older men, you know. Funny enough, there's also what we call infrequent ejaculation. Hmm, that's interesting. Interesting. So men who don't ejaculate frequently can have their sperms damaged. We, we, we come from a very religious um, society and um, I know that people are told 
Because there's some people who actually abstain from sex. So are you saying that abstinence can lead to this? I, I need to clarify this because I'm sure our viewers want to know. Yes, it's a, it's a delicate answer I have to give now because um, in, in as much as one would not encourage um, just, you know, random sex and yes. all that, but it's healthy to ejaculate from time to time. How the man decides to do this uh, will be left for him. But even to digress a bit, even yes. prostate cancer you know, yes. is also been linked to you know, not, not Less, ejaculating. Uh, yes, I, I've, so, I've read that. I've yeah, read that so, study. I, and yeah. I think we need to go back into it because this is a very interesting topic. And I'm yeah. sure the men out there really want to know. So this conversation is definitely not over. And when we come back, we'll be talking about other topics associated with the modern trends in assisted reproductive technology. Welcome back to the show and you're watching My Fertility Path. We have the duo, Dr. Ajayis, in the studio and they have been talking to us about the modern trends in assisted reproductive technology. Before we continue this conversation with them, what do you know about ART? Let's go and find out. <laughs> Infertility is a problem in childbearing, so um, assisted um, infertility methods um, are methods like IVF, like um, surrogacy, the two I know, they help people that have um, challenges childbearing, with childbearing, have children. Basically what that is, is with couples who are struggling to um, conceive due to various reasons, which could be um, medical conditions on the female side or on the male side. Um, medical science has come up with ways to assist in um, them being reproductive. So um, the most popular one we know is um, the IVF, which is simply means in vitro fertilization. It involves um, taking the egg that's produced by the female and the sperm from the male, fertilizing it and then um, putting it back in the womb and then uh, in that way. So that will be for certain medical conditions that probably prevent maybe it's a low sperm count on the side of the male or on the side uh, with the female it might be blocked fallopian tubes whatever interferes with um, the sperm fertilizing the egg in the natural way it should occur um, IVF can correct that. There are so many options out there for people who are looking to either conceive to conceive naturally or semi-naturally um, so many women these days especially if they're um, getting up there in terms of age are freezing their eggs so that they're still viable when it's time for them to you know when they're ready to have children um, there's so many women who are using surrogates women and men I should say because this is a journey for both men the wife or the the woman and the man um, and so people are using surrogates and that's that's just as effective you know infertility difficulty conceiving is an issue that affects so many people and we don't talk about it enough you know, it affects so many people. There's so much shame and stigma around it, and there really doesn't need to be because there's so many advances with medicine, with technology that make it possible for people to have their own children. I believe in vitro. Um, I think you can also, I mean, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can also adopt. I think there are many children out there that need a home, that need loving parents. Um, but I think in vitro is the number one that I know. Um, you can have, you can save your eggs and then, you know, or have a surrogate. A surrogate person can help you carry your child if you're having difficulties. Clearly, modern trends in assisted reproductive technology is a mystery to many. And that is why we're here. So doctor, these modern trends that we've been talking about, how readily available are they? Well, I guess they're readily available in Nigeria. Okay. And, um, I think we're lucky in that assisted reproduction is what part of medicine that uh, almost anything that is available in the world is possible in Nigeria. So these things are, we're not talking abstract, you know, what we've been saying. Hmm. They are readily available in Nigeria. And affordability? Well, that's, the, it depends on who is talking. You know, it's like um, the story of the, like the iPhone. 
<laughs> yes. Technology is always like that. Yeah. So if you're going to get a top notch, then it might be a little bit pricey, mm -hmm. at least at the initial stage, yes. until it really becomes uh, a, almost a commodity. But right now, of course, IVF is driven by technology. And that really is the difference between the other parts of medicine and the assisted conception, is technology. Technology is the bane for That's assisted right. conception. Yeah, yeah. So what is the future of ART? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot we hope for. for yes. You know, for instance, we, it's, we don't know some cases of uh, what causes male infertility sometimes we, 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 we don't know. Or even like um, one of the groups of infertility is un unexplained. You understand? We hope that in future we can go to what we call the molecular level, be able to make a diagnosis of, you know, correct diagnosis to the um, the, 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 the root cause of infertility and if possible not to need IVF so to speak you know to have ways that you can treat because sometimes you know the woman goes through IVF because for the man, for the man. so if there are ways that we can find genes that control uh, you know certain uh, sperm production and all that and, and that can be work, worked on so sure there's yeah, so but in the yeah. short term what yeah. we're working on now is like how we personalized treatment for it. So, you know, IVF is like, um, it's like a blanket treatment for infertility. But what the first thing that will be in the frontiers now is mm -hmm. that uh, what the kind of procedure you have might be different from the one I will have, you know, so that it's, and it's getting there. We're, we're almost knocking on that door. Okay. You know, now it's possible for us to see that not everybody will benefit from the typical thing that we say we transform the three or the five. So you do ICSI? Uh, well, ICSI is just for fertilization. Okay. That's almost taken for granted now. It's no longer a novel. Okay. You know, it's almost taken for granted now. But there's some other frontiers that we're knocking on. Okay. For example, when to do a transfer. Okay. You know, the, the, the many things are based on assumptions. Why do we do the three and the five transfers? What is the what is I the basis that. of the assumption? Yes. The assumption is that when you bring out the embryo or the you bring out the egg mm -hmm. and you fertilize, the egg is going at the same rate, almost at the same rate as the endometrium where it's going to go into. Mm. But we've seen over time now that there might be a gap or there may be a dyssynchrony between the two. And that also now people can be able to almost tell that and say, okay, fine, you probably will need your transfer on day six. While I can do my own transfer day five, you know, so there's so many things that are going on now yeah. that we. we I remember we, that actually because yeah. I was given a certain date for transfer yeah, and all that. Right. Yes, I remember that. So, um, doctor, are there any downsides to ART? Yeah. Yes, uh, because first, it's not hundred percent. It doesn't work all the time. Hmm. So, what's the percentage like? Yeah. So the percentage depends on the age of the woman. Some other factors, but basically on the age of the woman because the age of the egg is the main um, determinant of, of success rates. Um, so 30, 40 percent there averagely. Uh, it could be higher, it could be lower. For instance, if a woman is over 40 years using her own eggs, she could have a success rate of less than 10 percent. A woman less than 30 years can have a success rate of 50 percent. And with the PGD we talked about, the screening, genetic screening, the success rates can even be higher because that is selecting even the best embryos that are genetically okay and that are more likely to implant and form the baby. So one of the downsides is the success rate. It's still not 100%. Many clients or patients are disappointed when it fails. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Cost could be looked at as a downside because um, many of the sufferers of uh, people who have a challenge of infertility are indigent, you understand? So, you know, funds, putting funds together, you know, uh, what we try to do is explain to them, even from the get-go, what are the likely, what are the things that can happen. You know, but uh, I always prefer to look at the, the positives. You know, um, the, the joy we see in the faces of women or couples who succeed after IVF, after waiting for many years, is cannot be described. Okay, when we return, we'll take some questions from social media and we will discuss why there might be reservations for ART in this time and age. Please stay with us.
You are still watching My Fertility Pass. Our guests, Dr. Victor Ajayi and Dr. Bayami Ajayi. Thank you again. And right now, my producers are pulling up questions from social media. Someone wants to know what the success rate of ART is. I know we've treated it, but can you just throw a little more light on that? Okay, um, the success rate of, if, of um, ART depends on the couple. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, the woman is the determinant. The age of the woman is the determinant of, of the success rate. Because, the, if you like, the ingredients that make up the embryo, 80% comes from the egg. So the egg plays a major role. Mm. So the success rates for a woman who is less than 30 years were about 40 to 50 percent, while those uh, for a woman who is more than 40 years using her own eggs will be less than 10 percent. But that woman who is over 40 can improve her chances if she ha has to use donor eggs. But it's not all cases. So of course um, the couple will be evaluated mm -hmm. and the best options given to them. So um, someone else wants to know: Is there an increased chance of birth defects? If I become pregnant through ART, ART does not has not been shown to improve uh, to increase the risk of birth defects. Um, what can happen with natural conception can also happen with ART in terms of birth defects and miscarriages that we talked mm. about. So there's no evidence to show that ART increases the risk of birth defects. Okay. Yeah, because the, it's the genes that are still coming together. So it's the genes that you have and the, 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 your husband has that we're bringing together. So it, it does not increase the risk of bad defects. Okay. There's another question here that says, will scar tissues around my ovaries make it difficult to retrieve oocytes? Potentially, it, it can do that. Um, scar tissue can kind of plaster down the ovary mm -hmm. because when we collect eggs for assisted reproduction for IVF, we need to go to the ovary, you know, um, put a needle through, get to the ovaries and collect the eggs. So if the ovaries are high up and be plastered down by this scar tissue, it may make it difficult mm. to collect eggs, you know. So potentially it can, but not in all cases. I know that this question is relevant. It says, how painful is egg retrieval in women? I'm really scared of doing this because I heard it's very painful. Um, without sedation or some form of anesthesia, it can be painful. But standard egg retrieval is done under some form of sedation. So there are some medications we give, you know, so that you know you don't feel the woman does not feel pain. pain. You know, so um, that person should not be afraid to do assisted reproduction because of pain. We have ways to prevent that from happening. Is it localized sedation? No, it's, or? A, it's a general sedation, but it's called conscious sedation. You know, so um, she might be slightly awake, she could hear us talk and all that, but she's calm, there's no pain. Can you use IVF to predetermine, or rather to, to eliminate sickle cell? Let me put it that way. Well, to prevent it, you to, know, prevent. to prevent a couple who have the genotype AS, mm -hmm. uh, husband is AS, mm -hmm. wife is AS, they potentially can have a child with SS, yes. sickle cell disease. So with IVF and PGD, PGD is pre-implant implantation genetic diagnosis, we can prevent this from happening. Mm -hmm. So we can screen the embryos, mm -hmm. embryos are formed from the eggs and the sperms, and screen the embryo to see whether what genotype is the embryo carrying. So of course we now transfer only the embryos that do not have the SS genotype. Mm -hmm. So AS or A can be transferred back into the uterus so the couple can be free from having a child with sickle cell disease. Thank you, Drs. Ajayi 1 and Ajayi 2, Dr. Victor and Dr. Victor, see I almost watched you guys, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Victor and Dr. Bayami Ajayi, thank you so much for shedding light in the modern trends in ART. Because the show is tailored to fertility and fertility only, you can be assured that we will touch on everything and anything and hopefully together we can address all these issues surrounding infertility. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. It was an absolute pleasure. And you always remember, infertility should never define you. See someone, talk to someone today. My name is Ansi Kvetam. Keep sharing, keep educating, and I will see you next time. My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.